down to the left knee. left calf down to the left ankle slowly down to the left foot. Right down to the tips of the toes. Observing any sensations. back up to the right hip. Down to the right thigh. right knee the right calf right ankle and down to the right foot. Right down to the tips of the toes. Now simply becoming aware of sensations throughout the body.
Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. First, I want to say that this time in practice, I just I got so attached to it and I've been practicing it for twenty years maybe. <laughs> which brings me to the second point that I learned it in the MSR Center in Massachusetts where I lived for many years. And there is something uh, to say about the benefit of uh, being able to feel your body for the first time, although it's not uh, connected to the Buddhist philosophy, uh, the Enrichal program is very well rounded and it's a compassion based program. Um, yesterday I thought that I need to say because the book where I am now, it was a point in my life where I needed, I, I suffered from insomnia. John Kabat-Zinn, he founded the program there, he's doing a very good thing. If you need to think about the United States in the 80s, that if you don't have money, you don't have access to psychotherapy, and this eight weeks program that cost you like 200 bucks, it's great, and it's very, very beneficial. You need to compare it not to Buddhist philosophy, but to short-term therapies like CT or ACT or DEC, and it's very effective. Yes, MBSR is a wonderful program, it's benefited many countless people over the years, and it's wonderful that John Cabot's in brought that in, he's benefited an enormous number of people, so I'm, I'm not putting down the MBSR program because it's a, it really is, uh, for many people, it's, it's a door in, and that's what we even see here, the door in is through the body. Because it's something that uh, is easier to focus on, of course, and also it's something that we've really lost touch with in our modern world. And so by focusing on the body, it really can ground us, it can, it can help us in many, many ways. And so this, of course, is a wonderful thing that they're doing the MBSR program. And that's also why we see here in Buddhism, that's where we start body, because that's the, 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 the basis of everything. That's what I teach them, yes, uh, and uh, the people like living the head. <coughs> I, I said that's what I teach the MBSR, and it's uh, very good uh, to people to go down from, from the head, head to the body, body, to feel the body. Well, I'm asking, uh, there it's like to, to see the difference between to be in the head and to be in the body and to feel the body, to connect to the body. But I'm looking at the inside. So, I'm doing a lot of time. How come it helps me just to see uh, this uh, insight in the regular life? How do, the question is, how does this insight help you in the regular life? Yes, to feel the, the body, the, the I mean, all the body, and how, how, it, how it helps me minute after minute in my life. This insight. Yeah, uh, a brief answer now and then more will come in the next couple of sessions. Um, one, of course, as you mentioned, the first benefit is it gets us out of the blah, blah, blah mind. And it's the blah, blah, blah mind that creates so much suffering for us. So it really helps us to ground us in the present moment and to really let go of that obsessive, compulsive thinking mind that we're always trapped in. And of course, also, um, a lot of the emotions and mental afflictions of course, have an effect in the body. And so by focusing on the body, we can better see those as well to avoid, to help us to just notice them there in the body. And in that way, that gives us an opportunity to also to be able to step back them from a bit because we see what's going on in the body. It's like, you know, this sort of stepping back of thing. And so the body is very, very good for that. And of course, uh, from a Buddhist perspective, also at a more subtle level, um, we can then start to even balance the, the energies in the body. But of course, at the beginning level, we're not we're not working at that level. We're just simply working at this level of the body here. 
But through the chakras, it's a healing thing, I don't know. Right, but that's not something you would give to begin with. Of course, of course. But I mean, <laughs> of course. For, what if sure. it was for granted for Sure. Me? I mean, certainly, like, when you see body work in Buddhism, particularly Tibetan Buddhism, uh, you won't really see much of it until the very highest levels in Tantra. And then, of course, we're not working with this coarse body so much. We're working with the subtle body. But still, it's physical. It's still the body. But that's a much more subtle level of uh, work, body work than the, what we do at the beginning stages. But more will come. Sides, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the question is: Is it possible just by observing the body to have gain all these four insights? And of course, the answer is yes. Uh, is it certain by focusing on the body we'll get these four insights? Maybe not. But possible, sure. And I briefly mentioned that impermanence is really the basis of the other three. And I'm going to look at, I'm going to explain why that is the case. Um, so that's another reason why the body is a good starting point, because not only is it gets us more in connection with the body than stuck in the conceptual mind, but also uh, simply looking at the body can help us to gain all of these four insights. Exactly, and we'll, and we'll be looking at this uh, uh, process or how this can lead to these in the coming sessions. Yes and no. I mean, of course, any time anytime we're focused on something, that's helping mindfulness. Uh, and that's what we'll be doing in daily life, of course, to support Shama to practice. <coughs> but I think, as I briefly mentioned earlier, that if we really want to effectively go deep in Shamatha, we need to, to have a... Yeah, we, if, it, if we're moving, the focus is not as effective, but of course, if we're if we are in the scanning or in daily life, we're fully present. Of course, that's helping with mindfulness, and we need to do that. But as a shamatha practice to really go further along those stages, it's better to have a, a, an object that's not moving and narrow that down. More effective. Yeah, I mean, in general, of course, if we're doing shamatha practice, uh, we want it's not it's not helpful to keep moving in the session. But having said that, there are occasions where moving can be helpful in terms of if you're observing the mind or something and you're getting tight and tense and you can't release it, then maybe it's really good to move back into the body to establish relaxation. 
So you can, you can have that like shifting gears, stepping back when need be, but otherwise uh, it would be best to stay with whatever object that you're using in the practice and not sort of be moving constantly between them. Okay, um, it's time for a morning tea break, so let's have a tea break and come back at 11.15.